With the release of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate final DLC character Sora, the Super Smash Bros. series has received unparalleled fan attention and acclaim, and it's regarded as one of the best fighting games on the Nintendo Switch. Even the most famous games, however, have their share of little-known trivia that only diehard fans are aware of. This is no different for Super Smash Bros. The series contains a number of easter eggs, specialized facts, and unique additions that are almost entirely unknown to anyone save the most ardent fans. So here are things that 99% of people do not know about Super Smash Bros. So here we go. First up, we have Sonic's last minute inclusion. Sonic the Hedgehog's unexpected arrival in Super Smash Bros. Brawl was a high point for many fans in that game's story mode, The Subspace Emissary, and he's remained a fan favorite in subsequent iterations ever since. However, Sonic's genuinely random debut in that mode is emblematic of Sonic's whole inclusion in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Masahiro Sakurai, the series' director, informed Source Gaming that Sonic's involvement was never inevitable, despite popular belief. In truth, the blue blur was added to the game's roster of characters rather late in the production process. Furthermore, Sonic's inclusion resulted in the postponement of the release of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Our next entry is the shared secret between Joker and Master Hand. At first glance, the characters Master Hand and Joker appear to be diametrically opposed. One is a flying hand that is one of Super Smash Bros. series mascots, and the other is a relatively fresh addition from a PlayStation exclusive game that was introduced as DLC. However, Master Hand and Joker do have one unique feature in common. Both are voiced by the same performer, Xander Mobus. Mobus has a long history with Nintendo, most notably in the Super Smash Bros. franchise. Mobus not only plays these two dissimilar characters, but he also supplies voices for several more. These include Master Hand's polar opposite, Crazy Hand, as well as the announcer in the two most recent Super Smash Bros. installments. Next up, we're going to talk about some of the strongest characters. With the addition of Sora, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and the series as a whole now have a total of 82 different fighters. With so many characters across the series, it's not surprising that some have surpassed their rivals in strength throughout the years. In fact, four characters have been barred from participating in regulated tournaments throughout the franchise's history. Meta Knight in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Bayonetta and Cloud in Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS and Wii U, and Hero in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate are examples of this. While many of these characters were banned due to their overall strength, Hero's randomness led to his brief ban because many players thought that his down special, command select, and his ability to randomly inflict critical hits were both just too random and powerful for tournament play. In our next entry, we're going to talk about Roy and Corrin's release. Roy made his Super Smash Bros. debut in the second iteration, Super Smash Bros. Melee, as a character from the Fire Emblem series of turn-based strategy games. Roy, on the other hand, is a one-of-a-kind member of the Super Smash Bros. cast. Roy is the only character whose appearance in Smash Bros. predates the game from which he is derived. Fire Emblem Binding Blade, in which Roy made his debut, was published four months after the Japanese edition of Super Smash Bros. Melee. Corrin, who debuted in the Wii U and 3DS versions of Super Smash Bros., suffered a similar fate with their debut game, Fire Emblem Fates, arriving only 16 days after their Super Smash Bros. debut. Next up, we're going to talk about Super Smash Bros. Strange Origins. The Super Smash Bros. franchise has become of Nintendo's most iconic series, as well as a console-selling title in its own right. The series, on the other hand, began as something entirely different. Super Smash Bros. originated as Dragon King The Fighting Game, a one-of-a-kind fighting game for the Nintendo 64. Dragon King was designed to use the Nintendo 64's joystick in a combat environment, and featured several of the Smash Bros. franchise's staples, such as platforming and damage read as a percentage. But it was not to last. Dragon King The Fighting Game was subsequently reworked into the first Super Smash Bros., which was a huge hit. Sakurai elaborates on the plot in an interview with Nintendo.com. And on our last note, Final Smashes were meant to be added much earlier in the game's life. Since their debut in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Final Smashes, which are immensely strong moves unique to each fighter, have been a mainstay of the genre. The sound sample uncovered in the original Super Smash Bros. on the other hand, indicates that their inclusion was intended to happen far earlier in the series. One such example of this is Ness saying his now iconic final smash, PK Starstorm. 
Some of these sound samples are still present in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, but with filters applied to them. And there you have it folks, did you like today's video? Let us know down in the comments below who is your favorite fighter in Smash Bros. With this, we're going to wrap it up, so if you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more incredible videos like this. We hope to see you guys next time, and until then, I'll see you later.